So you want to know if a prostate cancer diagnosis is reliable. Well, in this video, you're going to learn all about whether or not a prostate cancer diagnosis is reliable. Welcome to Health Drum. I'm Dr. Bert Vorstman, a urological surgeon and former researcher. And this channel is all about routine medical conditions, self-care and digital health, so you can be informed and in control of your medical needs. If this is your first time on the channel and you like to get fact-based healthcare information, please hit the subscribe button for me. By the way, Health Drum is for educational and informational purposes only and not a substitute for professional medical advice. The links to the disclaimer and the material in this video are in the description below. Okay, so let's get into it and start sorting fact from fiction. So how reliable is a prostate cancer diagnosis? Let's start with symptoms. Are urinary and sexual symptoms early warning signs of prostate cancer? So despite the heavy marketing by the prostate cancer industry, there is no scientific evidence that urinary and sexual symptoms are early warning signs of prostate cancer. Urinary and sexual symptoms are simply signs of aging. And although urinary and sexual symptoms are signs of aging, be aware that most doctors will have you evaluated for prostate cancer. This approach will very likely lead you to health dangers. So let's take the journey towards a prostate cancer diagnosis and see how reliable these individual steps really are. So the digital rectal exam or DRE or prostate exam is highly unreliable. It depends on a judgment by the practitioner and different practitioners will feel different things. Abnormalities need to be at least one centimeter or more before being detectable and growths deeper in the prostate will need to be bigger before they can be detected. On the other hand, most prostate growths are benign and there's no evidence that the prostate exam saves significant numbers of lives. So the next test most commonly ordered is the PSA. How reliable is the PSA blood test? So the PSA blood test has a number of reliability concerns. It has a 78% false positive rate. Its specific label is a barefaced lie. It's not specific to the prostate or for prostate cancer. Its levels of zero to four being normal are false and made up. As well, big prostates typically generate big PSAs and most cancers detected are because the PSA was generated by the BPH or benign prostate enlargement and not the cancer detected. And there are even more reliability concerns with the PSA blood test. The PSA fluctuates normally throughout the day and from day to day. It also fluctuates between labs. It's easily raised or lowered by various benign processes. A low PSA doesn't mean you have no cancer and a high PSA doesn't mean you have cancer. On the other hand, some high grade prostate cancers may produce little or no PSA and go undetected. So the next step that's commonly undertaken after the highly unreliable prostate exam or PSA is the ultrasound guided prostate needle biopsy. How reliable is that? So the ultrasound guided prostate needle biopsy has been the standard way in which prostate tissue was sampled. This test, however, is highly unreliable. It's blind and random and highly risky. Although the transperineal technique is less risky than the transrectal technique, both techniques are associated with huge sampling errors because when the volume of tissue sampled is measured against the volume of the prostate, only about 0.1% of the prostate is sampled, meaning you are ignorant about what's going on in 99.9% .9 rest of the prostate. As well, interior and apical lesions in the prostate are difficult to access. Currently, the most common way to sample prostate tissue is through the fusion biopsy, a process where an MRI done elsewhere 
is fused with an ultrasound image being done in the urologist's office with a transrectal probe. So the most reliable way for targeting an abnormal area is with the MRI targeted biopsy. However, lesions need to be at least 10 millimeters in size or so before being able to be detected on MRI and to be targeted for biopsy. There's a problem here, however, as some high-grade cancers may have already metastasized by the time they are only two millimeters or so in size. So the prostate needle biopsy has some issues. It only samples a minute area of the prostate. The target may not be hit and certain areas of the prostate are more difficult to access than other parts of the prostate. What about the MRI? Let's take a look at that. So imaging of the prostate with the MRI is not foolproof either. Not all MRIs and radiologists are equal. There are false positives and false negatives. Growths need to be at least 10 millimeters or so in order to be seen and detected. And they need to be at least that large in order to be targeted for needle biopsy. On the other hand, some high-grade cancers, smaller than 10 millimeters, may already be metastatic. So what about the reliability of imaging studies for staging? So imaging studies are done to see if the cancer is localized or contained or spread outside of the prostate. However, there are reliability issues here aside from the quality of equipment and the ability of the doctors to interpret the imaging. CAT scans or bone scans are unreliable for detecting small volume spread whole body MRI for bony spread and PSMA scans for soft tissue spread are more reliable. However, false positives and false negatives are still possible and growths or lesions need to be big enough in order to be detected. On the other hand, some high grade lesions that are undetectable or barely detectable may have already spread. So what about the reliability of your pathological diagnosis? So assuming the correct area in question was biopsied, the Gleason classification and scoring system for prostate cancer is complex and dependent upon the knowledge and judgment of the pathologist. Errors of interpretation are possible. Studies have shown that grade misclassifications and disagreements between pathologists are common. Different pathologists can deliver a different diagnosis for the same biopsy. Even the same pathologist reading the same slides at another time may offer a different diagnosis. As well, the Gleason score fails to accurately predict the behavior of the particular cancer detected and the diagnosis may not represent the true state of affairs existing within the prostate for two reasons. Only a tiny amount of tissue was sampled with the needle biopsy, and most prostate cancers are multifocal, meaning that there are two or more growths usually within the prostate. So can other biomarkers be helpful? So aside from the highly unreliable PSA test, there are PSA derivatives like the free PSA and percent free PSA, then there's PSA kinetics like PSA doubling time and age-related PSAs. Then there's the PCA3, urine markers, spit tests, index scores, and genomic studies. Many are quite costly and not covered by insurance. As well, there's no irrefutable and reproducible evidence that any of these tests alter treatment plans so as to save significant numbers of lives. And you can get more info at healthdrum.com. So let's recap. In this video, how reliable is your prostate cancer diagnosis? You learned that the PSA test and the prostate exam are highly unreliable, that prostate imaging, your prostate biopsy, and your pathology are not foolproof. Therefore, always get a second opinion on your biopsy and always get a second opinion on your treatment plan.
To learn more about routine medical conditions, cash pay healthcare, and digital health, check out these other videos.